The Motown fill. Many of us know it and love it, but did you know there are three ways to play it in order of difficulty? Let's break down all three of these. You can do this and you can start using this in songs. Let's go. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. We're all about teaching you the core skills that really matter so you can know your next step and make serious progress in less time. And hey, while you're here, check out my free e-guide, my free gift to you. Discover what drumming stage you're in. This is the drumming progress blueprint. This is gonna show you exactly where you're at, what your next step is, and what you need to do to take action on reaching that next step. This is clarity and direction in your practicing. It really is your progress blueprint. And so go check it out, it's really cool. It's gonna help direct your practicing, show you exactly what to work on to make sure you are not stuck in a rut, to make sure you stay motivated, to make sure you reach your goals and reach your dreams because you are totally capable of doing it. Here's your resource, so dig in. All right, on with today's lesson. All right, we're gonna dive straight into this. I'm gonna play you the three fill variations. We'll start with the super simple one. Then we'll add a few extra notes in there to spice it up. And then the third one is definitely the most complex. So we'll play all three of these for you and then we'll break them down and we'll talk about all the techniques and the things you need to work on to master these. Now, even if you're really new to this, you could probably hear how all I'm doing is adding notes to each one. And that last one might've just sounded like a where it's kind of like, yeah, I can tell there's extra notes going on in there, but they kind of get blurred together and it kind of becomes a buzz, which is pretty much what happens there, which I think sounds really cool. And so each of these has its different kind of sound. You could use either of these three variations in the same part of a song that needs the Motown fill. Uh, and so then it's just a matter of, do I want to do a very simple boom, pop, pop, or do I want to add in a couple of extra ghost notes, or do I want to do a full on boom, So let's talk about each of these in a little more detail, break them down. The first one may not need much explanation because it is what you've heard a lot, and it is the simplest, just most bare bones skeleton version of this, where all we're doing is three and a four, and a lot of times I'll add a kick on the and a four. So I'll go three, a four, boom, bum, or I might leave that out. I might just go three, a uh, four, and that's it. Boom, pop, pop. And at a quicker tempo, boom, pop, pop. Psst. That's really all you need. You can just stop it on four. Three, a uh, four, psst. three, a uh, four. Psst. And so at a faster tempo, something super simple like that is often all you need. And so it's literally just three e and a four, boom, bump, and I'm doing right, left, right. You could do left, right, left, or right, right, left. The sticking doesn't matter too much here because it's not very fast, there's not a lot of notes. So that one I think is very simple, speaks for itself. The key with this one, if you're practicing this first, most bare bones, basics version of the film, the key is keeping everything in time. It's easy to rush it. It's easy to go like, and rush to the snare. And so you have to make sure you're allowing that space right there. Boom, kaka, listening to the sound of the tom. It's especially nice if you have a really warm rack tom that resonates nicely so you can feel it during that beat. Boom, kaka, which helps you want to lay things back a little more when there's some note length to the rack tom. And so pay attention to that. Make sure you're not rushing the kaka because you want to make sure beat four, a four is right there, right in time, cueing the band in on the downbeat. Boom, kaka. So at whatever tempo you're, you're working this, make sure to practice it even a little slower, like back off the tempo five to 10 BPM. Make sure you can lock it in there and then bump back up to the tempo of the song. So you can make sure you're dead on in time, nice and relaxed, boom, bop, bop, not rushing anything. But other than that, that's about it for that, that simple one. Very simple. But what we wanna do next is add in just a couple of ghost notes, really just two ghost notes. So instead of just going, we wanna instead go, 
So we're going right, right, left, but we're adding in two little ghost notes with the left hand there. Right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left. Now what's important here is making sure you ghost those. Those two left hand notes need to be very soft. What we don't want to do is at that point, it just becomes a different fill. It loses that fill of the boom, pop, pop, because we, we still want to feel that skeleton rhythm. That's the thing to keep in mind here, that with these three variations, the overall feel of the fill does not change. We still have the boom, pop, pop. That stays the same. We're just adding in little notes to spice up the space around those. So remember that, that the accent, the skeleton, the bare bones stays the same. So we still have boom, pop, pop. We're just adding in the two little left hand ghost notes. Now, if you are well-versed in your rudiments, then you might recognize that as an inverted paradiddle. If you don't, that's fine. I wouldn't have thought of that as an inverted paradiddle unless I'd you know, sat down and thought about it, which I did <laughs> before making this lesson. But what this really is, is right, left, left, right, left, which is an inverted paradiddle. All we're doing is taking a normal paradiddle and we're starting it at a different place. And so we're playing right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. That's an inverted paradiddle. Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. And so we're just doing that first part of it. Right, left, left, right, left, just like that. Now we could play this with a single sticking. We could go like that. Right, left, right, left, right, boom, boom. We could do that, but I find it harder to really make those two soft notes feel soft and consistent when I'm playing them with different hands, because I'd be having to go. Which works, but it just feels better to let the two ghost notes be played by the same hand. So that's why I like doing the inverted paradiddle sticking. And so we can just ghost those softly, boom, 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 pop, pop, and then go loud and lift up the arm for the whipping motion to finish off with an accent. Now we're gonna talk a little more about specifically what techniques you need to make sure you've got under your belt here and that you need to work on to master this. We're gonna come back to that in more detail, but let's go ahead and jump over to the third variation of the fill where we're kind of, we're just continuing along this path of adding extra ghost notes. So first we were doing just the skeleton rhythm, then we're adding in the two ghost notes, which becomes an inverted paradiddle. Now we're adding in two more ghost notes. So we still have those same two left ghost notes, but we're squeezing in two more with the right and so actually what happens here is right, left, left, right, right, left, right. So this time we're finishing with left, right instead of right, left because of how the sticking lands us. But we're doing two soft doubles with the hands. Right, left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, right. which really floats nicely and becomes very smooth when you master those doubles, which like I said, we're gonna talk a little more about in a minute. Now you might be like, wait, Steven, the skeleton rhythm changed here because now it's triplet based, which is true. Yes, it is now triplet based. But what I found is that if you're playing this at a quicker tempo, you can kind of make the skeleton rhythm still feel pretty straight if you push those doubles a little bit more. So instead of like that, as it gets faster, it can easily straighten out into doom, ba -da, doom bum, because I'm pushing those doubles a little bit ahead. So instead of, instead of boom, ba -da, doom, bum, I can push things a little bit and make it and so it just kind of brings us back into that original feel of three, a uh, four, three, a uh, four, and boom, and depending on how loose you have your snares, those doubles, the left, left, right, right, become just a blur of sound and kind of can become more like a buzz. So it starts to take on that which I think sounds really cool. I don't think it sounds too busy because of how it can take on that feel. And when you push those doubles a little bit, then that helps blur them together even more. So you end up with more of a buzz type of feel.
Now, rudiment wise, so if you're uh, well versed in your rudiments, you might have noticed that this was actually a paradiddle diddle, uh, except that we started it differently. It's really an inverted shifted paradiddle. I know this sounds overly complicated, but it's not. We're basically playing right, left, left, right, right, left, right. Right, left, left, right, right, left, right. I made a whole lesson about this sticking pattern a while back, so I'll link that video below so you can check this out in more detail. But basically it's a paradiddle diddle, but we have inverted it, so we flipped the sticking around, then we've started it one note off. And so we end up with this pattern that's a triplet based pattern because it's a six note sticking that's very paradiddle based. We've just added an extra double in. It's much like the inverted paradiddle. We've just added in an extra diddle, hence the inverted paradiddle diddle. So if that sounds complicated, don't worry about it. All we're doing is right, left, left, right, right, left, right. And then we're trying to push a little bit so that we can land on the left more quickly. So we finish there more quickly, that way a uh, four. We can still keep it straight feeling. And honestly, as you go faster, it's gonna feel more straight anyways. It starts to lose the boom, da -da. It starts to lose that tight swung feel as you go faster, so really you don't even have to worry about that. If that sounds overcomplicated and doesn't make sense, that's okay, because it's naturally gonna straighten out as you go faster. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, especially if you're a longtime fan of this channel, you know that this is the non-glamorous drummer. You know that we don't just focus on licks. I don't just throw licks at you and say, hey, practice this, good luck. Instead, I always wanna go more in depth with things. And so if you've learned all you wanted to learn so far at this point in the video, that's fine, you can turn the video off. But I don't wanna leave you hanging there because honestly, there's a lot of technique involved in everything I just played for you that I don't want to gloss over. I, don't, I never wanna sugarcoat something and say, here's the, here's the riff, here's the fill, go play it, cool, good luck. Because if there are certain things that your hands, that your fingers, that your grip isn't doing, then you're gonna run into trouble. And so at the most core level, you've gotta have a very good handle on your doubles here. You've gotta have a good handle on your doubles. And that's what we're, we're doing a lot of here, besides the, the very basic version where it's just right, left, right, boom, boom. So we're going right, left, left, right, left. Loud, loud, loud. So we're just ghosting those two left notes, which means you've gotta be able to do this. That simple, I know it's very simple, but sometimes it's another story to actually do this and then do it in the context of a fill. But if these aren't ghosted, then it's gonna get very messy. If it's, then like I showed you a few minutes ago, just become da 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 da, and that's a totally different fill that isn't the Motown fill, that isn't that boom, ba ba boom, boom kind of feel that we want. So practice very soft doubles. Now, bare bones basics, I have other videos here on the channel breaking this down in even more detail, which I'll link below. But what we want to be able to do is the free bounce, where you're dropping your stick on the pad. You've got the stick just resting here on a fulcrum formed probably with your middle finger and thumb. I like middle finger over index because it opens up my hand more. It gives me more space, more looseness. Be able to gently drop the stick down, kind of just, we're lifting it up, giving it a little push, fall down, and it bounces freely. Be able to let it bounce twice. So catch it after the second bounce. And at the most core level, that is what we're doing when we play doubles. Because we want the second note to be free. We don't want to be going, that's fine if we're going slowly, but that doesn't scale well. As we get faster, we have to be fine with just dropping the stick, letting it naturally bounce twice. And when you can have that under control, you can use the amount of pressure here to control how fast it happens. How hard you throw it down will determine how fast that bounce happens. But practice that with each hand, being able to control the spacing between those notes. And then, practice doing that in the context of a double stroke roll very slowly. Even if it feels a little sloppy at first, it's okay. But as, as soon as you can get it consistent, or it's happening consistently. And again, we're practicing this softly right now. We're not trying to be very loud, though you can do that too. But right now, right now we're specifically focusing on that soft, soft kind of playing and controlling the spacing, the dynamics here. So once you can get that happening consistently with left hand, remember this is left hand, and for many of you, that's your weak hand. This is gonna be tricky, but once you can get that happening, 
even going slow like this, make sure it's bounce. Because then you can start speeding it up. It suddenly scales very well. Now don't be in a hurry to rush to quicker tempo. Spend a lot of time going really slow there. And just as an exercise, you can sit here and practice going right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, just triplets. I could take my pad off. Do it on the snare. Like do that, do that on your snare. Keeping the left hand soft, making sure it's in time. Very simple, but very crucial, very core here. Now, what's cool is that once you work on that, well, that's gonna make that version number two of the Motown fill pretty straightforward. But if you're also working that with your right hand, and it's probably gonna be easier with your right hand if that's your stronger hand, then you're gonna be good to go for variation number three where we're adding in the right, right. Right, left, left, right, right, left, right. So if you can play your doubles like this, just quietly bouncing along nice and smooth, Those are your core ingredients. Now, one thing I, I definitely don't wanna leave out here is that we are manipulating stick height a lot because we're playing accents mixed in with ghost notes. And so there's a lot of technique involved here, a lot of things we definitely wanna unpack, but to try to keep it pretty simple, we're, what we're doing here, as soon as I play that first accent with my right hand, now keep in mind that's gonna be over here on the tom, but as soon as I do that, I'm then choking my stick down, bringing it down close to the snare. So if I'm just playing this on my pad, it looks like this. I'm hitting and then I'm choking out the rebound. That way it's down here ready to go for those next, for those doubles, the right, right, that the right hand's gotta play. And I'm choking it just by squeezing the stick. Just putting some pressure on it, not squeezing it tight, just enough pressure to keep it from bouncing up. That way it lands right here an inch or two above the pad. And then left hand is already right here ready to go. You always wanna have your sticks at the height they need to be based on the next dynamic you're gonna play. If the next note you're gonna play is soft, then don't be up here. Likewise, if the next note you're gonna play is loud, be ready to lift the stick up. So in this case, we wanna go and then lift the stick up as we're finishing here. So it's that smooth kind of motion. That's what you wanna work on. And if you can set up a mirror in front of your pad or put your pad on a bathroom counter, that's gonna help. So it just becomes that whipping motion where it's kind of like we're moving in slow motion. So we're choking out after the accent, so we're ready for the doubles, and then we're gently bringing the sticks up for that whipping type of motion. If you do that, if you intentionally practice that after working on those quiet, smooth two for the price of one doubles that you can first begin working on via the free bounce, which requires a loose fulcrum here, edge of thumb, middle finger, just like this. Work on those things, you're gonna get this. So I, I give you all that detail to say that don't, don't just sit down and practice the fills and expect them to come together perfectly. You've gotta work the core techniques first. It's possible you've already got your doubles under control and you already know how to do some of this. And in that case, great, maybe you can go ahead and go for it and just play the Motown fill. But I wanna make sure you know and understand all of that in case there's any frustration, in case there's anything that's just not happening smoothly or not feeling right. Don't practice the fill over and over again, hoping that it's just gonna smoothen itself out one day because there might be something more core going on. And so you definitely wanna start with the absolute core things, make sure those are together, then get back on your kit. So you could potentially practice this on a pad for a few weeks, a while to really get your, your technique happening, then move into the kit and honestly, it'll be so much easier than it would have been otherwise. So be patient, don't be in a hurry to go fast. When I was demonstrating at the beginning of this lesson, I was going at 105. 105, but if you wanna go a little slower, go like 90. No hurry to go fast. It is more fun to go a little quicker, and as soon as you can get those ghost notes happening smoothly, the fill feels better faster, because you're gonna use this at like moderate tempos, like 100, 110, 120, and so it doesn't make sense uh, musically super slow. But be patient, go as slow as you need to go. Know that it's gonna take some time. Stay on your pad for as long as you need to. Hey, as we wrap up today, I want you to go check out my free e-guide, my free gift to you I mentioned earlier. 
Discover what drumming stage you're in. Grab your drumming progress blueprint. That's what the guide is called. So that you can figure out what drumming stage you're in right now, what level you're at, what level you need to get to next, and what your next steps are to get there, and what the action steps are you need to take. This is so cool because it gives you so much clarity and direction. All you got to do is look through it, figure out, all right, I am right here. All right, here's where I'm going. Here are the action steps I need to take. Here are the lessons I need to go through to dig into this and to work these skills. I, I really think this guide is going to give you so much clarity, so much direction in your practicing. So definitely check it out. Really, it comes down to the four core things here knowing where you're at, knowing what your next step is, taking action on that next step, that's key. <laughs> taking action is very much key. Getting in your practice room, getting on your practice pad, and then getting results, making progress, reaping the reward of your work. And so go, go grab the guide. Total no-brainer, it's gonna help you out a bunch. It's free in the description, check that out. As always, thank you everyone so much for watching. Those of you who are the, the longtime subscribers and the super fans that watch all these videos and all these lessons, Thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you for hanging out with me and for digging into my content and for downloading my e-guides and for really getting results because it's those of you guys who take action on this, you are the star students. You're the ones that I hear from all the time who are saying, hey, this helped me so much. I got results from this. It's all because you took action. I can throw all this information at you and the information's no good if you don't take action on it. So absorb the information, get your sticks, get your pad, start practicing, reap the reward because there's, there's no point in all this unless you apply this to your practicing. I wanna hear about your results, so dig in. You can do it. I hope that this was step-by-step -step enough to show you exactly what core steps you need to do to learn these stickings and these fills today. I hope you have a lot of fun doing this because you can use these in a lot of songs for sure. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great week. Stay non-glamorous.